Hey, good morning guys. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been a while since I uploaded any videos, but today we're going to talk about the uh, issue we're having with the D Detroit Diesel DD13 and DD15 engines. So this only concerns these two engines. Uh, it could be the same issue with other Cummins or CAT or uh, uh, Packer engines and everything else in between, but we're not sure about that, so we're going to talk about this. So I've been having some issues with the Delta, with the EGR Delta pressure sensors. Uh, about a month ago or so, I was in uh, Corpus Christi area, which is extremely humid, and it was a very warm day. And the sense, uh, the check engine light came on and triggered that a uh, uh, EGR Delta pressure sensor, which will cause a 25% reduction in power, which is a lot if you have a full load of cars on the trailer and you try to climb up a hill or something. Uh, so I, I tried to resetting it a couple of times because we're used to driving this truck in a high desert area in Arizona, Southern California, which is not a lot of uh, humidity and it's not hot or warm at all. Um, with that being said, so I reset the uh, uh, computer a couple of times just to see what it would get about every 700 miles or so. It would re-trigger and came back on again. So when I brought it home, I, we, you know, we took off the sensors, we cleaned it really well. It was clogged a little bit, which would be a concern. And uh, once we did clear it, we put it back on and drove it again, uh, sure again, about 700 miles or so it came back on again. So now we're to believe that the issue is the sensor itself and not the uh, uh, cleaning or anything else. So today we're gonna show you how to go ahead and replace the sensor and uh, reprogram the sensor back to the ECM so we don't have this issue again. All right, let's get to it. Uh, I have my laptop but I have my uh, snap-on uh, accessory that goes with it. I'm gonna go ahead and scan it. I have not driven this truck for the past couple of days. It's just been sitting here parked, so I'm not sure if the check is light is there still or not, but uh, I guess we gotta find out. So come on, check it out. All right, so I did run some tools already here for this job. Uh, I was told that you will need a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet wrench and a couple extensions. I'm not sure exactly where the sensor is located, but it says, uh, so I grabbed a long extension and a short extension just to uh, just see where it, where it is. The sensor from the Freightliner store, I was just there a few minutes ago. They gave me a box. Uh, I have not opened it, it's still sealed here with the tapes. I will open it here in a second. I'm not sure exactly what's inside, but I know the sensor should be inside. And uh, here's the part number. Uh, if you if you have this issue and you want to replace it, it is 23539639. I will go ahead and put that here in the sensor. It says DP, Delta Pressure Sensor Kit. It says use this other part only if clogged. I'm not sure. Uh, what is it that that part is but there's a part number the set pin number will call which I like called in it was $162.99 for the Fredliner sir that's before tax and with tax and all that it came out to right around $177.33 since inside where I'm gonna go ahead and grab my laptop hook it up to see if that is there and if it is so you can see what it what, what it looks like and uh, then I'll show you how to remove the sensor put this one back on and then reprogram ready let's do this all right I'm gonna first if you want to come over here real quick, I'm going to check. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the key in the ignition. Turn it off to the SSA position to see if the light comes on. Zoom in here really fast. No, it's not. So it just says low air, which I know that. I want to start her up really quick, get the low air out. Once that's gone. So one of the lights is still on on the check engine. The other one is not. There was two lights here that gave me that issue with a 25% power reduction. But I'm going to give it a second for the air to be built up. Once the air is built up, then we can see if that code is still in the, uh, in the, in the system. Okay, so now it shows zero faults as before it would show one fault here in the system with, with 25% power reduction. So right now there's no fault. However, this yellow check engine light is still on here. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that today. Uh, in order for me to do that, what I'm gonna do is grab my laptop and grab my scanner and my snap on tool, plug it in here in the nine port and uh, show you what, uh, what I see there. Okay, be back in a second. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab my uh, Snap on tool, you will need one of these uh, USB link tools in order for you to go ahead and retrieve any code or reprogram anything. So 
I don't need the rest of the stuff. This is all I need. I'll put this right here away. And you will also need uh, Detroit Diesel Diagnostic Link 8. Uh, it's a subscription based. Uh, I believe it costs about $500 a year or so. So you will need that in order for you to be able to read, um, reset or program or do whatever you need to do to your ECM. So grab this guy, just like so, plug it in your laptop. It goes right here. Remove my electronic lock book from the 9 pin adapter. Plug this guy back in. Once that is in, you can show my computer here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, activate the uh, Nexus IQ. I'm gonna go ahead and start test here so that this guy is connected. As you can see now it's connecting and it is pairing. All right, I'm gonna turn on the key to the SSA position. Now it's running. In a few minutes, it's gonna go solid green. Okay, it's good to go. I'm gonna worry about it. As you can see, it's reading. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to Detroit Diesel's Diagnostic Leg 8. Open that guy. <clears throat> All right, now that uh, our PCM is connected, it is pairing, it is still showing me one fault code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that guy up and see what it is. I'm assuming it's probably that uh, EGR Delta Pressure Sensor code. But I'm not 100%, so I'll go ahead and open that up and uh, show you guys what's there. Yep, so right now it's just a trailer mark, uh, mark fuse, uh, marker fuse, which I already know about that. I'm not worried about it because I've activated this guy in there. And in order for me to bypass that fuse, this is what I had to do. No worries there, but this guy is still here. The EGR Delta pressure sensor out of calibration low. And I have replaced that or not replaced it. We said that a couple times and that's not going away. So no worries. We're going to go ahead and take care of this today because I know that's an issue and it keeps going back. So we'll leave this guy here as it is. I'm not going to mess with my laptop. Just plug it in. Oh, actually I may have to uh, just uh, leave the laptop here, but I will need to disengage the battery. So. I'll turn the key to the off position and kill the battery power. There we go, no more lights. Come here, pop the hood. Both lights. So, let me just climb up in here. Okay. Okay, so there it is. This is the EGR Delta pressure sensor. And this is the sensor that we're gonna take off just a couple of 10 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter bolts. We should be able to take that thing right off, unplug it from the harness, put the new one back in, and uh, try it again. All right. So let's go ahead. Now that you see where the sensor is located, really easy to get to it. I'm gonna see what's inside this box. So uh, I'm not open this guy yet. So it looks like we have a, a wiring harness to pick up. We're not going to need this because our wiring harness is good. So there's no need for me to cut this guy uh, and, uh, and replace it. But if you do need to replace yours, it comes in the kit. So you do not need to buy this up. I'll go ahead and save this for another time. It comes with new hardware, new bolts. I'm probably not going to need that either. Here is the sensor itself. As you can see, really easy. This area is where, where it gets clogged up, especially the moisture. We're just gonna go ahead and, and remove the uh, two 10 millimeter bolts. Take out this cap, 
put the new wiring harness back in, and then we're gonna come back and reset it. And hopefully that will do. Hopefully the phone goes red. There's a manual that goes with it. So I will need this. All I need at this point is just this, but you know, because before I do this, before I, I, I replace this, I'm gonna take it. So I grab my extensions, my ratchet, my 10 millimeter. I'm good to go. That's all I need. Oops. I'll put this guy back inside the truck so I won't lose anything. So I'm gonna come back in here and open that again. Try to find it, pick it up. So I'll put one here. All right. So when you're removing this little pickle connection here, uh, I'm not sure if you can see with the camera or not. There's too much sun in here right now. Remember, there's a little uh, uh, locking thing that goes behind it, and uh, it was a little pain to uh, get to. You need a flathead screwdriver. But once you got that, then. There's only another uh, 10 millimeter bolt in here that should be really easy to, to, uh, to come off. And I have the new one in here. As soon as I take that one off, I'll put this new one in. Be careful not to damage this uh, little O-rings in here. Because um, if you do, then this is going to defeat the purpose of what we're doing and it's not going to work properly. So let me take that off and then I will uh, show you how to solve this one back. Just use a wrench, just because I don't have enough real estate to get my ratchet or my extension in there. So it should be really easy. Same thing, 10 millimeters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze it out a little bit, and then, yeah, there you go. Now it's loose. I can just go ahead and use my fingers to get this guy off. And to tie it back up, I'll probably use the wrench again. So you will need both the wrench and the ratchet. All right. Okay. Bring it. Bring the camera here. So as you can see, there's still a lot of. Uh, carbon built up inside this thing, which is uh, why it's causing that issue. But uh, yeah, these rubbers are a bit hard too. They're not sealing properly. That's one, yeah, it just comes right off. Okay. That's probably why it's causing that. And it is an original unit. Okay. There's still a little bit of carbon. There's still a little bit of carbon around here. I'm gonna try to see if I can get take some out. There's not very much, it's not clogged or anything. Want like a pick? Uh, probably. Let me just uh, use this little. Alright, so it didn't pick up a whole lot of carbon from uh, since the last time we had it cleaned. Just a little bit in there, and, which is very normal. And, and again, this is a diesel engine. Uh, I think some of the issue could be the sensor itself, or it could be these O rings, they're really hard. If I press on them a couple of times, they'll probably crack. So put this guy back in. We're not gonna need him. This is garbage, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. All right, this is the new one. And I'll go ahead and put this guy back in here. Let's go ahead and get this little cover off too. And I'm gonna grab this guy and my wrench. Just like so. Again, same process, just in reverse. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Just make sure that you're the same. Just looks like there's a little bit of gap. They are the same. Okay. Alright, just had to make sure. Oh, that's going to put it over Mexico. Same phone numbers. Alright, cool. Alright, we're going to go put this guy back in here the same exact way as we took it off. And again, I will need to use my wrench for this one after I hand tied it. And since I'm in there, excuse me, let me get this other in here as well I'm gonna have tight boot as much as I can and then I'll go ahead and uh, torque them down with a wrench and my ratchet again we're using the same pigtail pigtail looks good connection looks good nothing burned nothing clogged so let me dip inside first here's the extension Tied up 
all the way just yet, and I'm done on this side. Once that is done, then I will. Now that's there, we're gonna go ahead and put this locking pin. That was giving me a hard time a second ago. Is this the way? Let me turn it over this way. So now that the sensor is secured, it's installed. I don't need the old one anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tools away. Wash my hands really quick because they get a little dirty. And then I'm gonna come back and start the truck and go ahead and uh, attempt to reprogram and hopefully they'll take it to the issue. Normally it's the best idea to go ahead and disconnect your battery before you do any electronic uh, work or replace any of the sensors. Uh, normally I would replace my batteries, but however, I have my disconnect switch here is basically the same thing so once i turn that off i do not have any power to the truck at all it's basically disconnecting it so now that i have done uh this was off the entire time now that i have replaced the uh, sensor i'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on okay now we have power back in the truck that's the same way as, as if i had uh, uh disconnected my battery now and uh, now again uh, i'm going back and connect it again so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to uh, reset that sensor and uh, see if uh, we can see any changes Great position. Obviously, we do not see any uh, check-in device right? except the same yellow one that we had here earlier. So what I'll go ahead and uh, if you bring it back here to my uh, laptop, and you can see that uh, since I had that thing disconnected, it says EGR engine exhaust. Oh, it just went away. EGR data pressure is out of calibration. So no worries. We're gonna go ahead and try to clear all the fault codes first. See if everything goes away. All right, this thing is still not going away. So what I what I would do now is I would go to actions, EGR, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a EGR delta pressure sensor recalibration. So click on it. Yep, it's good to go. Engine is not running. MCM two one P is connected. Yep, it is connected. Perform EGR delta pressure sensor. Yes, I'm gonna confirm. So now it says recalibration is executed. There are no errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Just means that there should be a new one. As you can see, bring it back here to the cluster. There are no more check engine lights on. So hopefully that, that has solved the uh, issue for me and I'm not gonna see this again. However, uh, I will make another video if this problem uh, comes back again and uh, I need to dive into it and see uh, what else could be the issue that's causing that. But for now, I, I don't have any more fault codes in the system and the little yellow check engine light has gone away. And usually the cycle for this truck, I've noticed about 700, 750 miles or so. So I'm not going to know anything about it for the next 750 miles. But as I continue to drive, I will know uh, for sure. So that's it. Hopefully uh, uh, this solved the problem. If you guys had any of this issue and if you like what you see, subscribe and like the video. Later.